Well, welcome back to the Pastor Pod. We are so glad you're here for another episode. Uh, we're in this podcast with my good friend Jay. We're just discussing uh, ministry and and leading. And Jay, how's it going up there in Boston today? Yep, uh, fall is still on the way in. Except today we've got a little bit of a warm spell coming through. It's a high 69 degrees, and so it's a little warmer today. I'm still in a hoodie though. Wow, so, wow, yeah. that's man, that's nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you got. Yeah, you're probably in the eighties or nineties. Yeah, man. We're 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 second summer still here. We're having a good time. It's uh and you live it's on actually the water. been kind of yeah, I live near the water, so we have a little breeze yeah. and uh coaching baseball on Saturdays. It was it's still like in the nineties. So we're we're just plugging away, man. Enjoying I'm a the jealous sun. of your baseball coaching. I'm coaching soccer and uh yeah, no, I don't no yeah, offense. You to the wrong, the, no offense, yeah. No offense to soccer players out there if you're coaching soccer or like soccer, um, but it's not for me. I'm a yeah. relatively big guy, and running for long periods of time is not my thing, and I'm just not a soccer player, right? Um, well, hey, we're talking about insecurities today. I'm just going well, to you know, all out on the table. Yeah, let's go ahead and just share all of it. <laughs> we uh, I, help, I helped out with my kids last, last season. They played soccer, and it, it, they did great. You know, it was awesome, but, you know, the coach was very intense, uh, screaming at seven-year-olds, and – I don't know a whole lot about soccer. I'm over basketball, baseball guy. You know, I know, I actually know those sports. I played those sports, but soccer, I'm just like slide tackle, slide tackle. And they're like, no, that's yeah. not this grade. Oh, right. Okay. That's Sorry. That's discouraged, Josh. That's <laughs> discouraged. Now, one thing I do know how to do as a coach is yell. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I can, I can say, go, go down the side, hit, down the, hit the side. ball, kick it in there. I don't know. What do you think? And they, all my soccer you... friends shake their heads and look at me with disgust. What Probably like they... some of our listeners are right now. <laughs> What do you think the number one sport in America is? What is? What do you think it is? What do you think people gravitate towards? Because they like I don't do. I don't Are you do talking that. watching sports or playing? Like for Ooh, kids or that's a tough one. Because that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't. I don't know which way I want to go with that. I just when you say basketball, I've coached basketball. I yeah. play basketball, but it's not really a sport. I go like, yeah, let's go do basketball. So yeah. I'm wondering, like, what do you? What do you yeah, think I think is? football is probably the the king. Probably whether it's NFL or college, depending on where you live. Like down here, it's more more college, but also pretty big NFL. Then NBA is really catching on with the younger. Like I think the generation coming up, they seem to be catching on more. And baseball is still still big, but like on my Twitter feed, like there's always a couple guys that are like Major League Baseball is everything, but they're like less. They're just less than than the others. You know, it's like basketball or football seems to be the king. Okay, I can give. I can that, get behind that's that. That's where. I, that's why I think I could be wrong. I mean, maybe I we need to research this. Baseball is America's sport. I just yeah, it's America's sport. It is, uh, but it's a. It's also a sport that will not entertain. You go when I go to a baseball game. I go for the environment. I just go to eat food watch. all the time. Food. So don't, I'm cheap. We t- I don't. We talk. We we eat sunflower seeds. Yes. We sometimes watch what's happening on the field. <laughs> Do you know what the best bargain at a baseball? We need to get on with our thing, but you know what the best bargain at a baseball field is? What's the best thing you can buy for the most bang for your buck at a baseball stadium? No matter what baseball stadium you go to. No, I don't know. Best bang for your buck. You want to take a guess? Uh, hot dog? Nope. Popcorn? Nope. Peanuts. Pretzel? Peanuts. Peanuts. It's a big old, it's five bucks. It's a big old bag and it'll last you the whole game. It's not a bad deal. And not you, a can bad throw, deal. you just throw the shells on the ground. That's right. You don't even care about it. Just throw the shells on the ground. Wow. It's like, it's like going to that restaurants that you can do those steakhouses you can go to in the South. Yes. You throw the Texas Roadhouse, on. baby. Yeah, we don't have those here. They took away the peanuts because of COVID. I'm still a little bit bitter about that. Yeah, I I'm like, no, that. I want to throw stuff on the floor. <laughs> why, why did you guys do this? <laughs> this is not cool. You know, <laughs> but but really, last year with soccer, though, I did feel, speaking of insecurity, I, did, I just don't know a lot about soccer. So, I mean, I felt like that parent that literally never – coaches their child because i didn't know what to tell them yeah, and, I, and I, I appreciate soccer but i don't i didn't grow up playing it like i did the others but today we're talking about insecurity and how do we overcome that in, as in our personal lives as leaders and jay there's something i want you to talk about because you've mentioned it but i've not even seen this clip but this might speak to some of your uh what insecurities <laughs> insecurities yeah, 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 but yeah. you apparently are famous you've been on america's funniest home videos yes um uh, we we have i was i was working on a church staff in central florida and i don't know why i really don't know why i couldn't turn down i could never turn down a, a bet so if you bet me to do something i was just gonna do it and still to this day i have trouble turning down a bet 
And so somebody said, Hey, I bet you can't jump over. It's hard for me to explain, but jump over a chair. So stand flat footed behind the chair. So folding metal chair, jump over it to where you stand on the other side and just sit down. So I attempted this and the video that my buddy's uh, actually filming it from his office. And he says, just do it. And I was like, how do you do it? And he says, just pick up your legs. So I jump over the chair, my feet hit the the seat of the chair and then i land kind of backwards on the chair and snap the chair in half and you hear it all you snap it is it is i was a i was a um uh, um an honorable mention if you don't know what that is on America's serious Funny videos that is like you know, that's you're a up big there. deal you almost made it to the top you wow. know top three is this and, on uh, your resume no, it should be though. It should be like uh <laughs> top three uh honorable mention on America's Funniest Videos. Dude. But yeah, every time that video comes up, I'm ashamed because I see myself on I see myself on the camera and the camera really does add 10 pounds uh to you. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says, it adds 10 pounds, sometimes 20, depending <laughs> on what you're wearing. Um, and it's just and it's and they'll share it. So they now put it in these videos. You ever seen those montage videos? Yes. Yeah. Now they put it in those videos. Anytime it's somebody jumping and falling on their backside, I'm in there some way, shape, or form. So every year at some point it, it gets shared again on Facebook and I get tagged and I'm like, oh no, it's out again. So <laughs> they've shown it at men's retreats at some places. It's just it's a whole thing. So can we share this for our listeners this week? I will I mean I just will. on their back. You know, because we're talking about insecurities and I want to be a transparent person, I will share it. Uh, but know that it is with cringing of teeth that I'm showing this. So, yeah, well, thanks so, for sharing, buddy. That's that's <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's crazy, but that's pretty cool. So let me ask you that that actually paints to the, the first the first thought that I had when we said, hey, we're going to talk about insecurities today. And, yeah. and again, if you've uh, if you haven't been clear, if we haven't been clear about what we're talking about. We're talking about baseball and soccer and all over the place. We really want to tackle this idea of insecurities. Right. And mm -hmm. I know as a pastor, you and I've talked about this offline. We do struggle from time to time, um, probably more often than we want to admit with our insecurities. So, Josh, I think we should just you know, start the conversation. Why, why is that? Why is it that we struggle to be comfortable in kind of our own skin? Uh, from your perspective, what do, you, what do you think? Why do you think that well, is? Why do you think we struggle with that? I think for me, I mean, I've always, as a kid, I struggled with, with my appearance and worried about what everybody thought of me. And I, I mean, just growing up, I, I struggled with that. Right. I mean, I, I struggled with, uh, you know, middle school, the way got middle school. I mean, just think middle school, right. For everyone <laughs> listening, right. Thinking. Middle school is just middle the hardest school. time of our life. And so growing up, I just had a more sense, I guess, a more, uh, uh just a more concern about what, what people thought of me, probably more than my brothers, more than people I knew. And I think in the, the root cause is either feeling, feeling like I, I'm not measuring up, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes being overly critical of who I am. And many times just, just not trusting in the, not trusting in God and how he's wired me and created me to be, of course, you know, working with teenagers for 13 years, I, I, I spoke a lot about it, encouraged a lot of teenagers to find their identity in Christ, not in what they do, not in their performance. And it's easy to teach that, but it's hard to live it out. And so when you become in any type of leadership, whether you're a pastor or not, uh, we tend to become critical first of ourselves. Um, and when I'm walking in the flesh, when I'm walking in my own strength and not leaning into God's strength, um, I begin to compare myself. I begin to worry uh, too much about what people think um, and, and become in this really, really vicious cycle of just being concerned about me and looking inwardly. And so uh, and everything we, you read we, in scripture, we, we talk about getting our eyes off ourselves and on Christ and, and serving others. So yeah, that's just a few initial thoughts. Well, I don't even want to cut you off. I actually want to lean in a little bit more to what you just said. I think from a leader's perspective, okay, you can, you can even paint this as a bigger leader than just pastors, but because this is the pastor pod, uh, we'll, we'll talk about pastors. It is difficult because you just said, you know, you know, we first tend to, you know, highlight our own. And then there comes this point where we've got to be in front of people and we've got to actually you said it was easier to teach these things, but harder to own it. You said it better than I just said it. But why do you, why do you even think that is? Because I mean, we we've almost as if the pastors are put in this place where it's hard for us to talk about this. This is not an easy subject to talk about, specifically in front of people that you're attempting to lead. Yeah, pastors struggle with that. 
Yeah, I, th- I think I think I think pastors, and I'm, I'm putting myself in this category, are naturally people pleasers. Because when you go in ministry, if you're really called by the Lord to be a pastor, then you genuinely want to help people, right? You want to yeah. serve and see people transformed. You want to encourage families, teenagers, people to find their identity in Christ, and all all those things, right? Where that becomes uh, unhealthy is when we focus first on what uh, the person thinks, not what God thinks. And so for me, um, you know, I always go back to, you know, David, when he was called to step at, step in as the next King, you know, that man looks on the outward, but God looks at the heart. Um, we <laughs> tend he to was, look at, he, he, he was the David. little, he was the, the run of the, he was the run of the family. He you wasn't know? even he, called in. He no. wasn't even called in. He was out with the nasty sheep. And, oh, yeah, uh, and I got that other guy. Yeah. yeah. I've got all, I've got all these great sons that are older <laughs> and stronger and taller and have better beards, whatever. And, and here's this little David, better beards. but God <laughs> saw his heart. Right. And so we live in a world that, that looks at the outward, but of course, God's kingdom's different. He looks at our, looks at us from the inside. So that's just a few initial thoughts. I think we naturally compare, we naturally compare our ministries. We compare our appearances. We, I mean, s- sinful nature is always self-absorbed. And I think most of the time, if I'm walking in an insecure way, it's usually because I'm somehow absorbed with Josh at some level and I've got to get my eyes off of me. Yeah. I think again, you can look back to the very beginning and we see this taking place. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's what we see in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, right? When they were first created, they're in the garden. There's no shame. There's no shame. There's not any insecurities. All right, now let's let's take the the pastor hot hat off for a minute. Let's put ourselves in the spot. We're in the garden. We're hanging out. I got my wife with me. We're 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 naked. We're good. All is good. All is healthy. All is fine. Then we go in and we start being tempted, and we're we're tempted to take this fruit that we know good and well. God has said, "Do not do." Right? We take the fruit, and then this 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 thing happens to where. Now, what we're finding in Genesis chapter three is they take the fruit and in moment they take the fruit and there's disobedience to God. They take their eyes off of God and start focusing on what they want. The moment they do that, what happens? Mm-hmm. They, they go, oh, wait a minute. I'm naked. I'm going to mm-hmm. cover myself up. AKA shame has mm-hmm. entered into the picture. Shame, whether it be insecurity, whatever it is, they knew they were no longer you know, comfortable in mm-hmm. the way they had created um, it to be. And I think if you fast forward, that's really where we are still today. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, we're still there today. We, we're comparing ourselves to others. This is where uh, jealousy comes into place. This is where yeah. when other successes happen, we struggle. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. brings about insecurity is because yeah. now our eyes, just what you just said, our eyes are now focused off of what, who God is and who, how God created us to be and now focused on me. And yeah, it's a good I think word. You're, I think you're absolutely right uh, with 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 that. Um, so yeah, that's good. That's good. Anything else that you would say? You know, hey, look. Why well, uh, would? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge to know. Just from the very beginning, we've we're insecure people, you know, because of sin, and we're without finding our security in Christ, we will f- look for for other things that that will not fill us and not give us our true identity. We most of the time we put our identity and our worth in what we do, not in who we are in Christ. Mm-hmm. That's, that's true for every person, but I think it really gets ugly and you really know that you're insecure when you're, when you and I, or anyone becomes an, a one upper, you know, you know, one uppers, right? Oh, like yeah, no matter what, time. right. You no matter me. what happens, you, you're, you always have a greater story or a worse story, right? It, you, you. You're, <laughs> you're meeting with another pastor and they're like, man, I'm going through uh, this really difficult situation or my, my aunt has cancer. And it's like, well, 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 well. Let me tell you about my person who has cancer. It's just like we, we, we can't be secure in ourselves and let someone else win or let someone else have the moment. Mm. And that's when I know if, if I do that, and there's been times I'm, I've done that, that's like a warning sign. It's like a bing, 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 you're insecure. Like, mm. Gosh, you're being insecure. This is not about you right now. You know, have you ever experienced that? Like we're just, and, and pastors are terrible at this. We always have to have a greater story. Well, oh, you had 30. Well, we had 31 baptisms. Well, you you know, oh, I went on a, on, a, on a vacation. We went on a vacation for 14 days, not 10. Well, I, you know, it's good for you, but you know, it's just like, what are we doing? You know? Right, 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 right. Well, I was joking with you before we ever went, we, we got on here. I was like, your kids, they, they go to, they go to school on an Island. I can't compare to that. <laughs> so listen, no. Venice beach is a man-made Island. They literally cut out a, like 
a waterway and created an island. It's 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 awesome. Right. I can't compare to that. No, I uh, yes, absolutely, Josh. That's right. Just the nature. It doesn't that's take it the out nature. of the, take it out of church world. We've done this. Mm -hmm. and we do this at football parties. We do this everywhere. Yep. We're telling a joke. Well, did you hear the one about you know? We got to tell a better joke. We got to. We yep. go around. It's around, right? And so I had to write down something mm -hmm. you just said that um, I think is just unbelievable uh, when it comes to like you know I have, we're we're afraid to like not win. We're afraid to you know we don't want to mm -hmm. like not win or whatnot. We have to feel like we're we're adding something to it and not being secure in just who we are and what, you know, what we have. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. huge. Well, it's um, easy to do. We all do it. I do it. And I'm like, what am I doing? This person's telling me their struggle. Why did I, why did I share this? I mean, here's the thing. We should all share our struggles and carry each other's burdens. But when someone's pouring out their heart and my first thought is, well, I'm going to tell them about my struggle, then I'm obviously not thinking about them mm. thinking about, I'm already thinking about what I want to say. And, and, that's, that's the one so, upper. That's so now, good. Now that's the one side, but there's also the false humility side. There's oh, a lot man. of people who view humility as someone that walks around like Eeyore, you know, that's, well, you know, I'm just so humble. Everything's just, you know, I just, you know, well, how are you doing? Oh, well, I'm making it. Well, that's not really humility. Humility is knowing who you are in Christ and your humble confidence in who he is. And, and, and so sometimes we've over spiritualized on the other extreme. You're not one upping. You're just walking around like, well, you know, well, you know, I guess I'll make it well, right, right, you know, right. and that's, that's false humility. Right. And, and we, and we cannot encourage, or we, we can't take, if someone encourages us, oh, I can't, oh, don't, oh, don't tell, oh, no, I can't, no, I, that, that's unhealthy to almost not even receive it as encouragement, but not let it go to your head. Well, I but think it, I, I fall into that camp sometimes in the fact that like, I don't, I don't do well taking a compliment. Right. Um, right. I don't, I don't do that well at all. Um, and so I, I, I can totally relate to the aspect of that. And then, you know, some of it is, I don't want to take compliment because. Again, well, I think it's good that you think about it. Cause you don't be like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Tell me more. You know, that's, that's pride. Right. But if they say, Hey, thank you for this. It's okay to say, yeah, I appreciate your encouragement, but then you would deflect, yeah. then you deflect to the Lord or to deflect to someone else. Well, right. Hey, that great event was great. Well, yeah. Thanks for the encouragement. Hey, our team, let me tell you about, yeah. I mean, tell all our volunteers, man, look, look what they've done. You don't sit there and go, yeah, I want to bask in it. Tell me, yes. Tell me how great I am, you know, which That's doesn't good. happen often, but you know, right. Oh man, this is so good. I hope, I hope everybody else is taking notes. I'm taking notes over here. I think, well, we, well, I think it's exacerbated because of social media. Ooh. You know, we see other people's feeds we see their ministries or we we look at their platform or uh, and we think that we're missing out or and, it, and when we think that way or we think that i'm not as relevant or i'm not at that place or at that position or fill in the blank then we become cynical we become uh, ungrateful for where god has us and that cycle of comparison resentment cynicism that's happened in my heart before and god has really been convicting me of that over the last gosh i don't have many years just be be all in where god has you and your your race is your race i'm not supposed to run your race jay and and you're not supposed to run mine we're, we're called uniquely by god to run the race he's put us on here at this time at this place and uh keep our eyes on him that's good that's good and that that takes me to uh, you know something i would i would be willing to bet that we don't like to live in our insecurities we don't like to highlight you know we don't we don't like to talk about them uh we're not we're not really proud of them usually uh we try to put them at bay and put them to the side so what would you say josh uh you know just kind of thinking through this idea of insecurities what do you think the some of the major triggers are for what what triggers our insecurities what what you know what what highlights them what what brings them out what you know mm -hmm. opens the door and allows them to show their their kind of ugly faces what what what, what is it I think a big one for me is just the fear of failure. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to fail. You don't want to come fall short and, and I can become insecure if I'm, if I'm worried too much about what might happen. Mm. And, and in essence, I'm, I'm fearful of what's to come when it's truly not my future to control or I, mm. and I can't even control it anyway. That's and right. so, okay. you know, Proverbs 29, 25 is a verse. My dad would, would go over with me a lot. You know, he was a, He's a great pastor and encourager to me, even to this day. But he, he said, the fear of the, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Cool. And if all I do is fear people or fear what might come, um, it, it damages my, my potential and it makes me 
literally uh, lose focus on a big God that wow that has it in control. That's good. How about you, Jay? I know going back to your your past and where you've been. Yeah, I think I think exactly kind of piggybacking on what you just said about failures. I think some of that stems from and I think what really kind of triggers it is when we start thinking about where we've been, like mm-hmm. our past in general. Right. Um, let's be honest. We've all made our share of uh, mistakes in in life in work in ministry. We mm-hmm. drop the ball. You know, we've fallen short of any of the expectations that have been put in front of us. And we kind of, I, I think we're all guilty of carrying around baggage that doesn't need to be there. We've, mm-hmm. we're choosing to carry around this baggage of who, what, you know, what I've done and what I have or have not accomplished. And that plays a factor into our life and it rears in and it comes out in the weirdest ways. Right. Um, and, and so I think about, and, you know, going back to scripture, I think about uh, Peter, that's why I, I think about mm-hmm. Peter. Right. And so Peter, as we know in scripture, he dropped the ball. Uh, you know, I still think about the scripture that, that tells us, you know, Peter denied Jesus and, and, and Jesus get looked at him like eye contact when he denied him. It's like Peter's like, oh, he was he, I denied him. Peter dropped the ball huge, big time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I believe that's why we have the highlighted scripture where Jesus comes to him after the resurrection and says, hey, mm-hmm. Peter, do you love me? Mm-hmm. Right. He's actually coming along saying, don't let this don't let this hinder you. Don't Mm. let this disable you from what you're going to do and what you're going to accomplish, Mm. Peter, Mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't do it because I believe without that conversation with Jesus, where would Peter be? What would happen? Let's just go down that road for a moment and think Mm -hmm. about the insecurities that Peter would deal Mm -hmm. with. You know, how can I lead people? How can I do that? I've denied Christ myself. How will they ever, why, what kind of credibility do I have? Yeah. He went back to fishing. Right. I mean, that's where he found him. He went back to what he did before he followed Jesus, he, you know, because he, he felt, I'm sure he felt like a complete failure, completely inadequate to accomplish mm-hmm. anything at this point because mm-hmm. of his past. Now we, again, that's what happens to us. We have this past, we have this history, we have things that we've done that we're not proud of. And we allow those to be kind of attached to us. And we never truly, uh, you know, get rid of them. The God who God has forgiven us, but we have not forgiven ourselves. That's and right. There's a problem with that. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's where insecurities kind of like, like to live. It's the, it's the ground that kind of fosters Mm -hmm. life, you know, gives life to these insecurities because we can't forgive ourselves, Mm -hmm. even though God says, Hey, look, I've forgiven you. And I think that is a major uh, trigger. Right. And so I think one of the, for leaders specifically, we have to understand it's, it, it is extremely difficult to make progress forward if we're constantly looking backwards. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the struggle we have. That's huge. When I was in when I was in high school, my youth pastor asked me to share a message to the youth group on a on a mission trip. It was like my first sermon. I didn't even know I was going to do it. He's like, "Hey, I need you to do this in two days." And uh, I remember getting up. My hands are sweating. Uh-huh. I was stressed out. You know, I had my little my little notes, and um, and I just my ner- my voice was cracking and my leg was shaking. And you know, typically I don't have a hard time talking because I've I've always been a talker. <laughs> but when I got up there. I could feel all the insecurities coming out because I was focusing not on them or what God wanted for them. I was only focused on me. Mm. And I learned that as, you know, as in high school. And when I finally surrendered to the ministry, even to this day, I get nervous before I, I teach or preach. But when I do feel that insecurity or that concern, I try to go back to reminding me that I'm there to just simply be a mouthpiece and it's not about me. And if I can keep my eyes on, on him and point people to him, he's going to give me the grace. He's going to give me the words. And, uh, and so then when I walk off the stage or when I'm done with the small group, um, at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's, it's ultimately about being a vessel. And that's hard to do, man. That's hard to do because we in America specifically focus so much of our identity and our worth on what we do and our performance and not as much in on whose we are and, and being in Christ mm. and, and that my worth is not wrapped up in, in my role as a pastor, but more importantly, as a child of God and, and knowing that I'm secure in him. That's good. That that's when I know I'm off base is when I'm focusing on what I do and not who, whose I am. That's good, Josh. That's really, 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 really good. And, and so we, I mean, we could have conversation all day long about insecurities and why they're there and what triggers them. Um, but we're, we're kind of naming this podcast, overcoming the insecurities. And I've been taking notes and, and things of those sorts. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it would be 
helpful for me even to kind of maybe come to a point where we go, okay, well, how do we overcome these insecurities? You know, what, what is, what does it take? What is it, what are some steps that we can take practically to really overcome uh, insecurities in our, in our life, Josh? So what, what do you say to that? If somebody would say, okay, you've got me listening to this podcast on overcoming my insecurities. We've talked a lot about insecurities and what causes mm-hmm. those insecurities, but how do, how do we actually overcome them? Well, I think, I think it's important to know, to know who we are and who we're not. You know, I was, I mentioned John the Baptist last week and I'm actually diving more into him this Sunday at our church. And it's a fascinating leadership study because he had so many chances to, to be a one upper. I mean, he was like, he was literally prophesied about imagine like you saying, yeah. So tell me about yourself. Yeah. So like I'm in the old Testament and the new Testament. I'm in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I mean, I'm in Hebrews, uh, Malachi, Isaiah. Uh, I've got a book deal, you know, I've got a great platform. I mean, the guy could have, could have put his, put his energy into that, but he knew his role was to point to Jesus. And I think the challenge for me, I can say for me is knowing that I'm going to be secure in what God has called Josh Robinson to do, not on what he's called J mud to do or Craig Rochelle or Carrie Newhoff or any other leader that we would call famous. Right. Cause I mean, we got to trust God's wiring for us, like the way he's gifted us. Right, Jay. I mean, that's, that's a big one for me is knowing that he's called me to do something specific and that's going to be different than other people. Yeah. I think right on. I, I think I can only agree with that statement and the concept that really trusting and I guess the way I would is trusting God's craftsmanship. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I find very, I found out, I guess lately in my life, uh, if you listen to the last podcast, I even kind of went into this aspect of I've really become and trying to even become more comfortable in who God created me to be, mm-hmm. like who he created me. We're told in in the Old Testament, uh, you know, the, the the psalmist says, you know, we were knit together in our mother's womb. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm telling you, I'm not one that usually goes, well, let's imagine what that sounds like. But literally, my daughter knits. She's a, she's a 13 year old knitter. If mm-hmm. I was like, that's a weird knitter. Anyhow, uh, if I was to tell her, knit me a sweatshirt, she could knit me a sweatshirt. She could put a shirt on me. And but I watch her when she knits. And I and I watch her as she it's it's a tedious task of putting this to this. And if you do it wrong, you know, you can go back and do it, whatever, but you it's it comes out in this beautiful product of of, of handcrafted, right? No two sweatshirts are gonna be the same um, because of the of of how it works, right? It's handcrafted. That's what God does. He handcrafts us. He knits us together. And, and I think it's beautiful. And you pair That's that. Great. Now pair that with what Paul says in, in First Corinthians. He talks about this aspect of the church being a body. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I this is this is this is beautiful. We're we're a body. And in that body, right, the eye can't say to the ear, you're not a, you're not good enough because you're not an eye, and the foot, the hand, you know, we 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 read this, but Mm-hmm. Really, what Paul is describing for us is that every church needs an eye, an ear, a hand. Every mm-hmm. church needs that. And here you have a God who hand knit us together, put us together in our mother's womb, and now he's dispersed us to be the church. And that comes out in local forms of a church. And every church needs an eye, a hand. And mm-hmm. listen, that is beautiful in the fact that, like, be comfortable with who you are. Because God hand knits you together for your local church. That's right. For the church you've pastored, Josh, for the church I pastor, God has hand knit people together to play the roles in the church. Now, no one wants to be the big toe, mm-hmm. right? No one wants to be the big toe, but the big toe is extremely important. It is. Right? It's extremely important. Every part is important, right? So we have to understand that you were put together. And yes, you may not be an eye. You may not be the flashy part. You may get covered up with a sock and have to wear a shoe, <laughs> Right. But you're playing extremely, I bet that's how some of our kids workers feels. I'm just Mm -hmm. a sock in the back. Nobody knows I even exist. (laughs) The truth of the matter is they exist. They're so, so crucial to the local Mm -hmm. church. Absolutely. They're not highlighted a lot and they don't probably get, you know, they're not highlighted the way that, you know, maybe the worship team's highlighted. Right. But everybody's playing their part. That's right. And I think these insecurities, we got to trust our crap. Like I'm okay. Not being that person. Let me Mm -hmm. embrace who God knit me together and created me to be. I don't That's know. I word. think this is just so That's beautiful and really how God has done this and engineered all of this to work together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's one mm-hmm. of the biggest, one of the biggest ways we can overcome insecurity, inse- our insecurities is really just trust the handcraftedness of God. I think it's just yes. beautiful. Yes. That's a good word, man. That's, that is so good. 
I think for me too, um, I've been learning to discipline myself to journal and pray when I'm insecure, when I'm struggling, when I don't know what to do with a situation or I feel inadequate, uh, to go to my heavenly father. And it sounds so gosh, foundational, maybe even basic for many of you guys listening. Uh, but for me, for me to take the worries and cares and the insecurities and dump it out of my brain onto a piece of paper and say, God, I need you to step in. I need you to strengthen me, change me, uh, re- refocus me. Uh, and then, I, and then t- typically I turn it into a gratitude journal where I'm like, God, here's what you are doing. Here's what I want to praise you for. And I find that when I spend more time in, in worship and in praising God and being grateful, even when I feel overwhelmed, because I've had a couple of weeks, just there's been a lot of things going on in our life and our, our church and our, and, and, and ministering to people. And, and it can just become overwhelming. And uh, I have to go to that safe place, that sacred moment, that space with my father and say, Hey, I need you to step in. And, and God, God gives us that peace. And, 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 and that's something I'm trying to grow in as a leader, instead of just trying to walk around and carry it, talk to myself about it. You know, Paul said, stop, you know, don't worry instead of worrying, pray, uh, mm. instead of, instead of giving that energy that should be given to me, uh, you know, cast that burden upon me. So f- very tangible way, uh, pray about your insecurity to your heavenly father, who is continually secure in his love for us as his kids. That's so good. that's good. And I don't care if it's basic or not. Sometimes I think we forget, you know, the old saying, you learned everything you need to know in life in kindergarten. I think sometimes we neglect the basic foundational things that we need to be doing that God says, look, if you just, if you'll just pray, yeah. let me take care of that. Mm-hmm. Just read my word. You just spend time with me. I'll take care mm-hmm. of that. I think that's right. No, I don't think we should ever apologize for saying it. it's basic because many times that's where we get in trouble is we stop doing the basic things. Right. That's right. Um, yeah. You said this earlier and I, I, I've got to say you, you, you said this, maybe not in these words, but you, you said, learn, you got to learn to share the spotlight. You didn't even say it in those words, but you were talking about like, you know, me. And I think that stems from like learning to identify our, our pride. But at the same time, it's just like, I need to actually learn how to give away the spotlight. Hmm. If I can learn to give away the spotlight, it will help with my insecurities because it's no longer about me. Right. right? It's no longer focused on me. If I can hmm. learn to give away that. Right. And I think pride, uh, pride often, is a way of covering up those insecurities. I think we mm-hmm. think of it the opposite, but it actually covers up the insecurities. Yeah. It yeah. comes out in the way we talk to others, where we're leading others, the way we respond to other people's success. When we see somebody else successing, going back to mm-hmm. your, your one uppers and, and things like that. Uh, it's been haunting us from the very beginning. We talked about Adam yep. and Eve earlier. It, it's there, right? So we got to learn to actually share that spotlight. Somebody once told me, I can't take credit for this, um, but they once told me, they said, look, success is actually measured by the fruit that grows on other people's trees, because I've been giving Mm. away that spotlight. I've been Mm. pouring into other people. It's not about me. It's about making disciples. It's about pouring into others. So that Mm. was just refreshing to remember when you said that it's instantly what came to my mind. I, I plugged it into my notes. here. I I love that. That's great. Because we don't typically focus on that. We focus on what we do, you know, and, and like, like on our team here down in uh, Venice, we talk a lot about a leader that's growing is a leader that doesn't do it all, but leads with people to do it and, you know, develops leaders and then, and then celebrates the win because you are a successful leader when you have multiplied yourself and they're equipped and empowered and all that. Right. And so one, one way that I'm learning to do that is, is to encourage people and celebrate the wins of others, you Mm -hmm. know, be kingdom minded, other pastors, other leaders, uh, focus on celebrating them. And when they have something, they have a win, uh, you, you just celebrate it. You, you don't think about your win. Uh, you know, once again, you just focus on like, praise God for what he's doing in your life. Right. And, yeah. and even some things you were sharing to me earlier, Jay, about just God's doing some cool stuff in your life and your family. And, and instead of focusing on, on Josh, I focus on you. That's, that's the goal. I don't always do that well. But the Bible calls us to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And that's one of the most misapplied scriptures. You know, when someone's struggling, we tend to say, well, me too. Well, me too. And that's, there's a time for that. But when someone's hurting, you just sit down there with them and you, you sit with them and you listen and you, you don't tell them how to feel. You just say, hey, I'm with you. I care about you. You matter to me. And, and that's truly how to be secure is when you can either suffer with people or you can celebrate with people and I don't have to mention myself. And, and, and I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> this is what I need to hear. 
You know, right. this is something I want to grow in as a as a guy. I, I the truth of the matter is we we all struggle with insecurities. We don't talk about it a lot. We don't want to highlight it a lot. And I, I think we we mess with that. Um, and so I was again, I'll share this and then we we can wrap up today. But I was preaching the other day and in, in, uh, in one of our gatherings and somebody came up to me afterwards and they said, Jay, did you hear the room? when you started getting personal and transparent about where you're, where you struggle. I was talking about how I, I'm not really comfortable speaking publicly. I'm really not. That's what I do for a living, but I'm not comfortable <laughs> with it. And right. he said, he said, he said, he said, I, you weren't paying attention. I, I guess you missed it. Cause I was like, I don't know what you're talking about because I wasn't paying attention, but he said, I could hear a pin drop in the room mm-hmm. because you were instantly connected with all of us. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. we all have insecurities. That's right. And I say that just say we all have insecurities, right? Yep. And we just need to learn to, um, you know, identify them and overcome those insecurities. That's right. It's a good word, man. We're all, we're on a journey and God has an ability to use us even in our insecurities. That's right. And develop more and more of his Christ likeness in our hearts. Um, because at the end of the day, it's all about him. It's all about him. It's the story of the scriptures, right? It's the story That's of it. God's redemption. He's redeeming us from where shame and insecurity was birthed. That's and right. we're in the process of being redeemed every single day. So we're, we can be secure. We know the end of the story. Whoa, whoa. So. There we go. We Let's do it. Story. All right. Hey, listen, this has been fun, Josh. Again, another great yeah. time hanging out and having a good conversation. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed I, this. I tell you, if you have questions, listen, we've had a few come in. We want to hear from you guys um, and ladies. Whoever's listening out there, uh, we want to hear from you. So you can shoot some questions to the pastor pod at gmail.com. I think there's one we're going to answer here in the next couple of weeks. That was a pretty, pretty funny, funny, funny question you received, Jay. So I definitely want us to hit on that, but, uh, but be on the lookout for that. And we're actually going to be bringing in our first guest this next week. And yes, so be sir. on the lookout for that. And, uh, it's going to be, we ex- tell, it's can we be... tell who it is? Or are we going to like, leave it a secret? I think we, I think we, sh- well, it's up. What do you think, Jay? I, I I'm good do. with it. I, I, you good with it? I mean, now yeah, we're kind of I, off I, the cuff here. We didn't plan on well, it. Well, I mean, I mean, is he? Is he? Did he say yes for sure? Because <laughs> if he didn't say yes, it's like, uh, well, you, he, he definitely he, has to. All do right, it now. all right, you got me. Because I can't remember. I think it was something like I, it, it put, has the potential to work, and I was like, oh wait a minute, potential. That's well, you're, here's the thing. We'll we'll leave it. We'll let, let it be vague, but yeah, you're not going to want to miss vague. the next one because Mystery, it's going to be yes. leadership gold, is what I'll call next I next podcast. One hundred percent agree. We both know this individual very very well, and uh, I think you're not going to want to miss our first guest. And so I'm excited about that. We why don't we make an announcement on social media when yeah. they, there's confirmation? Let's uh, do it. If not, we'll go to we'll have a we may have another guest, but I think he'll I think he'll pull through. We'll see. Yeah. Anyhow. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, until next time, again, hit us up, follow us, share all those good things. If this has been an encouragement to you, I know it's been encouraging me to Josh uh, to hear from you as always. And uh, we will see you next time on the Pastor Pod.